you guys, Jim Herzig, 413 Outdoors. Welcome to the episode. The following hunt is my Vermont rifle hunt. I was uh, set up in the same spot I've been hunting all year. Very productive spot. Uh, the deer were feeding the acorns there real good. Uh, pretty much all throughout all of October and November. It's a family group of does in there that live in there pretty much every year. Uh, the bucks move in there when the rut hits and uh, they really rip that whole area up scrapes, rubs, you know, I had a trail camera set up in there. It was averaging about 180 pictures a week there over the scrapes. Seven or eight different bucks in there. So uh, this particular hunt uh, is what I call a late start hunt. Been hunting real hard so kind of like a fool I slept in that morning in the peak of the rut but it didn't bite me this time. Uh, slept in, had to uh, cross the river to get up to this spot because our bridge got taken out. So across that river, got in, just got set up. I was really just getting my video turned on when I caught the motion up above me. So uh, happened quick, again, <laughs> kind of the pattern this year for me, but uh, made a good shot. It's a deer I knew, so kind of the deer I was hoping to see when I was set up there. I had uh, a few trail cam pictures of him during the day working the scrapes right about 20 yards in front of my stand just before rifle season opened right after bow season had closed. There's a gap in between there. So Anyway, uh, hope you enjoy the hunt. I did. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, that's the first year I shot with my Tika rifle too, so uh, I was pretty happy. Enjoy. used to be the bridge across to the camp. That last storm we had washed it right out. We've had to compromise. There's our new mode of transportation. The guideline. And pull the rope, pull yourself across. make for interesting travels. This is a honey hole. I killed a couple deer, or a deer and a bear earlier this year. I've actually killed quite a few deer up here. A lot of bear. But uh, we'll head on up, check out a couple trail cameras I got, and get a spot set up for tomorrow morning. I'll probably cross the river downstream from here so I don't have to ride in a boat. But uh, if we're fortunate enough to harvest something, it ought to be uh, an interesting Adventure getting it across the river. Have a nice little boat ride with a deer. So, well, that'll make some good video. All right, so we'll head up into these oaks and see what we got. So, this is the path I used to take, or usually take. My approach is going to be a little bit different during rifle season, but this is how I sneak in. Got a nice gravel bank along the river here. Kind of cuts up into the woods and causes a natural pinch point up here. Also with all the oaks up there and a little brook crossing, it makes for a pretty good spot. You can see there's a couple buck rubs right here. This is my path. Walk right up that little travel corridor right here. One morning, you know, this is a spot you gotta get in real early. So if it gets light at seven, you wanna be set up by six. You know, at least an hour ahead of time. That way everything can settle down because the deer a lot of times are in here. Most of the animals I've seen in this spot have been within the first, you know, 45 minutes of light. The doe I shot was within a half hour of daylight. And, you know, I got, Lots of video of, I don't know, probably 10, 15 deer, all within the first hour of light. But if you don't get in your spot early enough and let things calm down and settle in, you're pretty, odds are pretty against you. When you're walking in, you're going to be bumping the deer out you plan on hunting. So, no point in cutting corners. 
spoiling your hunt before your hunt even starts. Make sure when you get a good spot like this and it turns into a morning spot, you get in there plenty early enough so that you know it ain't over before it starts. You don't want to sit in a stand five, six hours knowing that you bumped all the deer out on your way into it. So your direction of which you approach your stand and the timing is equally as important, if not more important, than your stand placement. So as I'm walking up, I see a couple scrapes right here. Fairly old, nothing to write home about, but buck signs, buck signs. So I'll get up on top of this little shelf here and check out these oaks and see what I got to work with. Mother Nature takes out your bridge to your camp, you have to improvise. That's our way across. A little boat, the guide wire. There's a sting. Hmm. What will you do for a buck? Not sure if I even got that on film. I was just getting ready to do my interview. I had a nice buck walking across this top of the ridge here. He's working through these oaks nose of the ground. So I just smoked him. I climb down and see what he is. Walking up on the bucket you shot. He actually came down there a little closer. He's oh, down right here. I knew it looked like a good one going across the top. This is the buck that was in here working them scrapes during the day. Nice eight point. So, yeah. Haven't shot a buck with this gun ever before. So, pretty stoked. Made a nice shot on him. He didn't go far at all. guys, it's Jim Herzig, just shot this nice little eight point, my rifle in Vermont, got a lot of trail cam pictures of this deer, I've always been working the scrapes right here a lot of times right around this time of the day, 9.45, 10 o'clock, I've had extreme good luck in this spot, shot a bear with my bow here, a doe with my bow, I uh, skipped an arrow off a drop tine six point here, and then uh, it was a seven point shot here the second day of the season when I wasn't here. One of the other guys at camp came up and uh, got a nice 160 pound seven point. And I just got in here, had a little bit of a late start. Uh, the bridge 
to our camp got taken out with the last storm we had. So I got to park about half a mile down the road and find a spot to cross the river. So I did that this morning. I was in here yesterday, did a little scouting, still hunting, the wind was crazy. I walked up on this flat just to see how it was. I had a couple trail cameras. One of them didn't really have a whole lot, had a doe. But the uh, oaks are being fed in here hard. All the acorns are still on the ground. So there's a lot of deer sign, a lot of deer droppings, uh, buck sign everywhere, scrapes everywhere. There's probably 20 scrapes in this one little area here. So uh, walked up on the shelf just about 100 yards over there yesterday and see where it looked like two bucks were fighting. And I actually found a broken tine on the ground, which is uh, pretty cool. Never found that before, but uh, looked like it had only been there within a day. Um, so I checked this trail camera right here and I had a nice 10 point come up through uh, last night, or uh, two nights ago, the 16th. Um, so I figured I'd come back in here and I'll sit it. We got a storm front coming in. Rain should be here around two o'clock. Hard rain right straight through till Sunday night, Monday morning, winds coming. So I knew they'd be moving. Uh, I literally just got set up, got my tree arm in, and I was just getting ready to do my interview when I saw this guy sneaking across the shelf up above me about 100 yards away. Uh, I knew it was gonna have to be quick, so I turned the camera on, tried to find it, and finally I said, you know what? I already lost three deer this year trying to get them on film and make good video. So uh, I knew this was that target eight that had been in here and I really wanted to get them. So the, uh, the hunter in me came out and I uh, put them down. I'll review the footage after the camera was on when I made the shot and I had it pointed in the general direction, but odds are pretty good that, you know, it ain't gonna be great footage, but he might be in it. So uh, happy as heck, uh, haven't shot a buck with my rifle in Vermont in years. This is my first kill with my, my uh, new Tika right here. I love it. Uh, I put it right on it, pulled the trigger, and he actually ran down the hill here about 60 yards closer and uh, did the weeble wobble and fell over in front of me. So uh, no track job. I uh, can't be prouder. So, and uh, yeah, it's a beautiful, nice, nice basket eight point. Probably a, gonna guess 150 pounds. Good size Vermont buck and uh, it's gonna be some good eating. My daughter's gonna be thrilled. She wanted me to come home with a buck today. Uh, they've been bugging me. Fortunately, she said 10 points. I'm hoping eight will suffice. Suffices for me, I would've shot a three point. So uh, anyway, I got a lot of work to get this guy dressed out, dragged out and uh, cross the river and to the truck. In order to get it up to the truck, I gotta drag it up a 40 foot cliff embankment. So this is gonna be a fun drag. Uh, there's no one else up here, so I got no one to help and uh, no cell phone service, so one of the luxuries of hunting the big woods, uh, he, cell phones are just for video games. You're not going to have any service up here. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Team 413 on the board, and Vermont, nice Vermont rifle buck. Beautiful eight point. Put my tag in the Guardian tag holder. These things are sweet. It's going to come in handy, especially because i got to drag this thing across the river. It'll protect the tag. Nowadays, most of your licenses you buy offline, you have to print them out. I print them out on pretty good, high-quality paper because they'll fall apart on your hands. You know, you're out in the woods, half the time it's in the rain, snow, who the heck knows. So, the state of Vermont also gives you a transportation tag, too, to help out with that if you go to a check-in station and pick them up. But, uh, so I'll use my Guardian tag holder. Put it right onto the base of the antler here. Use this nice zip tie. And we'll be 100% legal. The all tag, ready to transport. There you have it. That right there is the killing tree. Two with a bow, one with a rifle. Kind of a non-traditional setup. Kind of right out there in the open. I climb up about 30 feet. I don't usually set up in the open like that, but this area right here, it's all beach whips. So when 
And that's usually my bow spot. I never really rifle hunted here before. And during bow season, all these beach whips are covered in leaves. So I'm tucked in tight there. All those little beech trees that are all around it, they brush me in good. Now I stick out like a sore thumb, but the good thing is, with a rifle, is they're not on top of you. That deer was 100 yards away when I shot it. You know? So, a little non-traditional, but it worked. And we got a nice eight-pointer here, so on, on to the drag, the fun part. Any of you want to come help, more than welcome to join me. Especially when we go across the river. Well, the only pictures were of me dragging the deer out and whatnot. So, uh, no activity down on the shelf, but that just goes to show, you know. Just because your camera isn't showing you pictures of deer, use the terrain, use the sign. That camera is a little laser beam pointing across a 30 foot section of woods. Unless it's on a pinch point or a funnel. You know, deer walk around that all day long and you won't get any pictures of it. When I was bow hunting this spot, I had pictures of, you know, I was getting 120 pictures a week because it was so hot. You know, it was scrapes, you know, bucks were working scrapes like crazy, so every buck in the woods came down to work the scrape. And, uh, but while I was hunting it, I saw 17 deer. Not one of them I got a picture of while I was in the stand. I killed the bear, I killed the doe, neither of those were on film, on the, on the camera, on the trail camera. I also saw another bear after I killed the first bear come down through. I got on video, but not on the trail camera. So, just because your camera isn't giving you pictures doesn't mean the deer aren't in there. You need to hunt the sign, and this whole side hill is all acorns and beaches, and this ripped. The best I've ever seen. It's literally in... I've been hunting this spot since 1995. Here it is, 2017, so... 22 seasons. This is the best I have ever seen it in 22 seasons. And the results show, you know, you just got to put your time in and hunt it. That's uh, two with a bow, a bear and a doe, and one with a rifle. And unfortunately, I, I should have had a buck with the bow as well. I skipped the arrow off its back in the same spot. So hunt the sign when you see it, and you'll end up doing this. Dragging that thing out. Hopefully you have a lot of friends because uh, all mine are at work or out of, out of cell phone service. So this spot here doesn't have any cell phone service. So I got to get it out of my own. But I'm proud to do that. This is part of who I am, why we do it. You know, all of us on Team 413, we live for this. You know, when we're not hunting, we're thinking about hunting. When it's not hunting season, we're dreaming about hunting season. You know, I run trail cameras year round. I've got 13 different trail cameras I put out. This year I'll hit probably 1,000 pictures of bucks. So uh, best season I've ever had as far as the cameras go. Um, so we'll get this deer out now and on to Mass and hopefully Mass can bring some good luck too. I've had a little bit of a slow time there, but uh, uh, it'll turn around now that I can focus 100% on it. We'll, we'll get it done in Mass too. So all right, time to drag. Jim Herzig, out. Well, James does it again, you know, he has had one heck of a season. He's killed numerous deer, he got that big bear, uh, it just shows that hard work pays off. And for James, you know, he's in the woods every single day, he can possibly be a uh, scout, he's doing one heck of a job this year, you can't knock him for that. Uh, congratulations James, I mean, we're proud to have you on the team and it shows what a great hunter you are um, success after success so we really appreciate you know all the hard work you've put in for us uh, now we want to take a second and thank everybody that helped make um, this episode possible <music>
Overwatch Outpost Sporting Goods. Rods, reels, and rifles for hunting and fishing. Wicked Twisted Bowstrings. Trader Jan's Archery Pro Shop. Overwatch Outpost. JNS Scent. You can't beat the heat. Scent Lock. Hang On Helper. Guardian Hunting. Hawk. Upwind Odor Elimination. Tacticam. Share your hunt. Again, we just want to say thank you to everybody that helped make this possible. Uh, without you guys, we couldn't do it. You know, self-filming is uh, a lot harder than we truly expected. As you saw in this episode, James turned his camera on to get the intro, uh, turned, looked, and had his buck coming across the ridge. So, you know, he made one heck of a shot, and that's all that matters to us. Um, the filming's just a fun aspect that we get to do on the side. So, uh, we really enjoy doing it, and we hope that you guys get a kick out of watching us. Um, so, thank you guys for, you know, supporting us, and thank everybody out there that watches our show and supports us. If you want, you guys can check us out on Facebook, 413 Outdoors. Um, we show you guys our everyday life. You know, the couple of hours we get in the woods a weekend, shed hunting, uh, game trail camera pictures. So um, be sure to check us out, give us a follow, um, comment, help us, you know, get better at what we're doing because we just want to bring you the best we can. And like I said, uh, we really do thank you. Uh, next week's episode, we got James again uh, with his doe, Vermont doe. And we got Tommy Matika with some of his uh, more pheasant hunting. So uh, stay tuned. Check out next week's episode. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much.